I've been playing video games for nearly 16 years now, so I'm pretty familiar with gaming as a whole. There are first person shooters, platformers, simulation games, management games, and countless other genres that are pretty easy to describe. For example, a first person shooter is a game where you're in the eyes of the main character, usually shooting something. A management game is where you're in charge of managing a scenario or resource in order to meet an end goal. Most modern games fit snugly into one genre or another with an easy explanation like the ones that I just mentioned. But sometimes something truly unique and revolutionary comes out and it tests the boundaries of these predetermined genres of gaming. One of the biggest examples of this that I've seen in my lifetime is Outer Wilds. After recently picking it up to play for the first time since its release in 2019, I have to say that this game is a truly once in a generation gaming experience. I've never played a game quite like Outer Wilds. Fusing exploration, puzzles, mystery, action, and space all into a single game with tons of twists and turns that keep you intrigued is a hard task. But Mobius did an outstanding job. Outer Wilds is one of the most unique and memorable gaming experiences that I've ever seen, and today I'm going to try my best to tell you why. This game is pretty hard to explain, especially without spoiling it, so in this video I'm going to try to help you understand what it's about and why it's so awesome. I'm telling you that after watching this video, you're probably going to want to play this game. So instead of rambling on, let's go ahead and get into today's video talking about why Outer Wilds is so freaking awesome. A lot of games talk about giving the player freedom. Freedom to customize your character, freedom to choose if you want to approach a scenario with stealth or with guns blazing, or freedom to explore an open world and find a bunch of cool locations at your own pace. I talked a lot about freedom in my Breath of the Wild review, and I spoke about how that game did it right. I mentioned how the game says, hey, here's your end goal, and do it how you want to do it. Which to me sounds like the definition of freedom. But the freedom in Outer Wilds is completely different, and it's on an entirely different level from any game that I've ever played. And that's the first thing that makes it so awesome. In Outer Wilds, there is no story that you have to follow, no end goal, no beginning goal, and no explanation of what you have to do. In the beginning, you are given one task, which is to get launch codes to launch your ship and explore outer space. You get the launch codes, which activate a single event, necessary for a core gameplay element, and you're thrown into outer space with no direction at all. I am not exaggerating. They don't tell you anything, and you start your adventure however you want to start it. You can go to any of the planets in the solar system, land at any point on any of those planets, and start your adventure there. If something looks cool, you can go there with no restrictions whatsoever and see what that location has to offer. Even comparing it to a game like No Man's Sky, it's more open than that. In No Man's Sky, you have to make sure that you have the resources, fuel, and ship necessary to reach a specific location. In Outer Wilds, there is no limit. You have infinite fuel in your ship and no food or hunger. Your only limited resource is time. So you may ask, what's the point of this game and what's so cool about being able to explore something if there's no reason for doing so? Well, let me explain this to you as spoiler free as possible. While there's no set goal from the beginning, you do discover your own goals. Wherever it is that you may land for the first part of your journey, you will find something. Throughout each of the planets in the game, there are little landmarks such as ancient ruins, strange gravity-defying villages, or weird scientific instruments in orbit. These locations are all unique and they will definitely catch your interest as you fly around the outskirts of a planet. In each of these locations, you will find ancient texts or people to talk to. Reading the text or talking to some of the other space explorers, you can learn a small tidbit of information. The explorers may mention that they're stuck because they lost their ship, or you may find an ancient text talking about some failed teleportation experiment. Each of these little bits of information will always spark some form of curiosity within you, whether it's why the person's ship suddenly vanished or what the strange experiment was trying to accomplish. One thing leads to another, and you inevitably end up trying to piece together the story, which leads you down another wormhole which you try to piece together, and so on. Outer Wilds doesn't have a linear story, but your exploration will cause you to try to figure out what happened in a specific situation. These little sub-stories add up and result in a web of mystery that you end up trying to solve in order to figure out why all of these strange things are going on within the solar system. Your curiosity is the driving force behind the unraveling of this story, which makes it feel much more personal and like you are the one in charge of how the game is played. When you think of a game with a good story, you probably think of something like The Last of Us. 
The Last of Us is one of my favorite games of all time, but when you play it, you feel like you're living Joel's story, which is the point. Naughty Dog wrote the characters and the plot to be played out in a specific way, making it feel like you're being thrown into someone else's life. On the other side of the spectrum, think of a game like Fallout New Vegas. This is a story-based game where you're presented with choices that change your path. You can side with Caesar's Legion, or you can side with someone else. You do things that shape your own story, but ultimately the story is still somewhat predetermined and there are only so many ways that you could change the plot. Outer Wilds is different from both of these scenarios. While yes, there's still a story talking about the weird occurrences and what happened to cause things to be the way that they are, it isn't predetermined. You can hop around from one planet to another to piece together different aspects of the situation and discover it in any order that you could ever imagine. It's like playing The Last of Us, but starting three-fourths of the way through the story, then going back to figure out how you got to that point, and then jumping forward to use the knowledge you gained to figure out how to change the ending. It's hard to grasp, but it's another thing that makes this game such a memorable and outstanding one. Both of these things that I just mentioned help to create the backbone and foundation of this game. But there are layers upon layers of depth on top of each of these core mechanics that shape this game into the polished masterpiece that it is. One of which is the world building. In a game where you have to explore the world on your own, with a story that you have to piece together on your own time, it's extremely important that the world is worth exploring. If it was boring, had no character, and was empty, then there wouldn't be that curiosity that made you want to explore it in the first place. Outer Wilds has an open world that is large enough to make you feel small, but small enough to make it memorable. Each planet has its own characteristics, design, and charm, and every little detail adds up to paint a picture of a solar system worth exploring. Ranging from an ocean planet with endless water spouts and storms, to a brittle shell of a planet with a menacing black hole in the middle of it, each region has its own unique characteristics that make it feel completely different from all of the other ones. Spread along the surface and within the depths of each of these planets, you can find various little locations that all give you the details needed to piece together the story and solve the problem that plagues you throughout the game. One place can give you a bit of information that helps you in another place, and vice versa. You have to travel between these places in your little clunky spaceship to unfold the mysteries of the galaxy. The world is intertwined in the story, and every location has meaning. Most of your journey will be lonely, just you and your brain solving a giant puzzle. But spread throughout are little stems of life, with fellow travelers doing their thing. You have lonely little Esker chilling on his abandoned moon base. There's Rybeck playing his banjo and waiting around and hanging out. And there's you, meeting all of these travelers and entertaining them with your presence and your quest for knowledge. They don't move around or do anything crazy, but they're there to give you little bits of information about the planet you're on when you need them. They sit there, playing their instruments, and act as a sort of guide to tell you where to explore. While they may be stationary, the planets are not. It's not like you're wandering around a dry and dead world, or a world full of NPCs that walk around in circles to make the game feel alive. The very ground that you stand on and the very solar system that you're exploring is an ever-changing one based on the passage of time. Again, without spoiling anything, you are always in a fight against time in Outer Wilds, and time is one of the things that you have to work with in order to progress. For example, on Hollow Brittle, a planet with a black hole in the middle of it, the world is constantly collapsing due to the black hole that's sucking everything inside. You have to use this to your advantage in order to explore parts of Brittle Hollow that were previously hidden. You also have to find other parts before they get sucked into the black hole. This mentality goes with every other planet as well, and it's important to manage your time when exploring. Unraveling bits of information to form a story could be a bit confusing if done incorrectly. It's like trying to remember all of the Sekiro lore just by thinking about it. But a cool aspect of Outer Wilds is the one thing that helps to tie all of this information together, your ship's computer. This little portal of information stores everything you've learned throughout your journey and shows how it connects and where you found it. This allows you to easily go back and reference it when needed in order to continue your adventure where you left off. This is simple, but it's a huge thing that helps to make the task of exploring so much less overwhelming. But everything about the process of exploring is extremely exciting. It's not a walking simulator, and there's actually a lot of strategy to how you get around. You have a jetpack with limited fuel and a spaceship with unlimited fuel. You can enter and exit your spaceship without any screens or animations whatsoever, and traversing around with your jetpack is easier said than done. Some planets have extra gravity, some planets have no gravity, and others are breaking off and falling into a black hole. 
So you have to use what you have to navigate these obstacles while learning information and piecing together the story. You can use these forms of transportation alongside the ever-changing world to help or hurt you, like the countless number of times that I accidentally got sucked towards the black hole and used its pull to slingshot me around Brittle Hollow and get to where I needed to go. I don't know if this is supposed to be done, but let me tell you, I definitely did it. Also, when exploring, it's not overcomplicated. As you guys know, I'm a huge advocate for simple game design, and Outer Wilds does this perfectly. Flying the spaceship is easy with a few directions of thrusters and a way to slow down and match the speed of a planet, oftentimes not effectively. <laughs> Jetpack travel is about the same. You have a little camera that you can use to detect something called ghost matter, you read things by clicking on them, and you can find fellow explorers by listening to their lovely little tunes. The simplicity of the mechanics allow you to be able to focus on the narrative and the mysteries, and with the other things I just mentioned, help to make Outer Wilds such an amazing game. I could go on for an hour if I was able to get into the details, but since this is a spoiler-free review, I don't want to do that. Outer Wilds is one of those games that is better the less you know about it. I went into it not reading or watching anything about it, and it was one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had in gaming. So I hope this review gave you a glimpse into what the game is about and convinced you that it's worth trying. Again, I was very intentional and vague with what I talked about so that you can experience the excitement of unraveling the mysteries of the universe yourself. Mobius did an outstanding job with Outer Wilds, and it's one of the few games that I will recommend to anyone and everyone, regardless of their gaming preferences. Now that we've reached the end of the video, I have a quick announcement. I've gotten into the world of reading lately, and let me tell you, it has changed my life. I am actually addicted to reading books. <laughs> what a nerd. So, since it's hard to secure sponsors these days, this video is sponsored by me telling you to read a book. I made a list of books that I've read, and I will link it in the description below. There are some suggestions for non-fiction books, some for fiction, a few for marketing, and some of the ones that I remember reading when I was a teenager. My recommendation in this video is The Fish That Ate the Whale, which is a true story about an immigrant banana farmer in the early 1900s who single-handedly decided to start a revolution in Honduras because they were taxing his American company. There's more to it than that, and it's an extremely interesting story, so I will link it, along with all of my other recommendations, in the description below. The list will constantly be updated, so be sure to check back if you want to find some new reads. I earn a 10% commission on all purchases through my list, and buying from the site below supports local bookstores that are struggling in the times of pandemics and Amazon. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for today's video, so I hope you all enjoyed. What are your thoughts on Outer Wilds? Do you like it as much as I do, or do you think it's overrated? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to check out my book recommendations if you want to learn something new. I will see you guys next time, and peace.